I feel that many of us are multitasking all the time. And then on top of it, you know, you have to have a nice, clean house. It's like for women, especially, we have to be the perfect mother, perfect wife. You have to have the perfect career, you know. And on top of it, you have to have a super nice, clean house. And really, that is a lot. So that's why I feel that it's so important. One, prioritize and don't go crazy, you know. Like if you cannot do it, it's fine. The house is not going to fall apart. And two, ask for help. It is so hard for us to ask for help. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. Cleaning and tidying, two complementary tasks that often go hand in hand. Today, we explore the intersection between two essential household tasks that pair well to create a space that sparks joy. When you tidy, you confront yourself by becoming more aware of the possessions you choose to surround yourself with, designing your space and life accordingly. When you clean, you're confronting nature, something that is a bit more out of your control. No matter how tidy your space may be, the elements, meaning dirt, dust, food waste, germs, etc., build up over time and must be addressed regularly. So we'll explore how to bring more joy to this common task we can't avoid. Marcella Barraza is the founder and owner of MB Green Cleaning. She is a graduate of the Hospitality Administration and Hotel Management Program after working for an airline for more than 10 years. Marcella started in the cleaning industry in 2004, and she was inspired to switch to green cleaning after experiencing a series of maladies, including irritated skin and debilitating migraines. She traced this to the harmful chemicals in the cleaning products she used in her own home. She then made it her mission to help others safeguard their environment so that they can enjoy the comfort and contentment that comes with a clean and healthy home. Welcome to Spark Joy, Marcella. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Welcome, Marcella. I'm so happy you're here to help us unpack this big topic of cleaning and in particular, green cleaning. I'm really curious how you got into this business. I'm sure there's a story behind that. Yeah, so I I started doing the cleaning with regular traditional cleaning products that either your mother told you what to use or, you know, or you saw that what was more popular. So after a while, I started getting really, really bad headaches and a very bad rash, like skin rash. So my, actually my husband suggested that it could be the cleaning product. So I decided to make the switch and give it a try, give the green products a try. And I can tell you that the minute that I changed the products, everything changed. I had no more skin rash, uh, no more headaches. And that was a huge, huge impact on my health in my life in general, because it's not fun to have headaches every single day. So the minute that I changed, it was such a life changing for me. And I thought that I had to tell everybody about it. So that's how I kind of like, I got interested in the green cleaning business. I had to laugh when you said, you know, those traditional cleaning products. Uh I remember that in my house growing up, there was ammonia, Mm -hmm. bleach, comet, and pine saw. Right. And I remember somehow mixing ammonia and bleach together, not intentionally, but it was like I was cleaning with one and then, and I remember like, wow, this is really bad. Yeah. 
but those smells, I mean, they're good products. I mean, I guess they clean and kill everything that's on the surfaces, but they really, there's just no way that breathing in those kinds of fumes can be good for you. But I think most of us who grew up, you know, in the latter part of the last century, remember those products really well. Yeah, right, right. And that is like the worst combination that you could ever make. Oh, yeah. Ammonia and bleach, that's like coming like a recipe for like a strategy. Oh, absolutely. Many people don't realize that. And there is a huge misunderstanding, at least when I first started, there was a huge misunderstanding of like, oh, green products don't do the work. Green products are not going to clean or kill germs or whatever. I need to really bleach my toilets or really need to bleach my bath in general. And today there are like so many options out there, either on the market or you can even go to your own pantry and find green products like vinegar. It's a natural disinfectant. Rubbing alcohol is a natural disinfectant. So you can clean with that as well. You don't need to go to the supermarket and buy new products. So there are many, many ways that you can go green and just give it a try and see which works for you, which doesn't work. Some of them have a nice scent. People don't like scent, you know, like kind of like the smell. We do work with a company and those products don't have any kind of like fragrance just because I don't know if people are going to like fragrance or not. So we go, you know, straight and don't have any fragrance on our products. But there are so many options today. And I'm so happy that it's not a trend anymore, but a lifestyle. Right. That's such a good point. You know, that category of green products is so broad. I mean, we use that term green to apply to so many things. Can you tell us exactly what that means in the cleaning industry? You mentioned a couple of products that I know really do work, vinegar, and I know baking soda can be a good cleansing product, but there are a lot of products on the market that you can buy that call themselves green. How do you define that? And I know also, I I like that you mentioned a thing about fragrance, because I I love fragrance, but I'm not sensitive to fragrance, but a lot of people really are. So how do you define green as opposed to, you know, hypoallergenic or, you know, that kind of thing? Right. So the different products that are out there, I really, at the beginning, I had to go out buy a bunch of them, all of them, and try them all and see which one would work best. Because from one brand, you will have disinfectant for the bathroom. They're not really good for the floors. You know, like the same brand, the, the same brand that has a floor cleaner may not be as good as their bathroom disinfectant. And another product might have a great floor cleaner, but their um, stainless steel product will leave like streaks on, on the refrigerator. So you don't want to get that. So what I did was I really went out there and tried as many as I could. So I, I had all of them. I tried many, many of them, and I just got the best of each brand. I've definitely leaned on cleaning professionals and many of my clients have as well. I have a confession. I love tidying. I love putting things in place. I love organizing. I can do it with my eyes closed. It comes very natural to me and it gives me a lot of joy. But no matter how tidy I am, I still don't have that same joy for cleaning. I don't know why, (laughs) but... I know I have to do it, so it gets done, Right, (laughs) but I don't do it like I don't look forward to it, I guess I could say, and I know I'm probably not the only one who has those feelings. I know many of my clients often are apologizing for the state of their home or the dust bunnies that are rumbling Mm -hmm. up as we declutter. So what tips do you have for people who just are having trouble grasping a hold of this chore of cleaning or viewing it as a chore? Is there any way to make it more pleasurable? Right. I have to say that cleaning is not like a super fun job to do. It's not like you wake up on a Saturday morning and say, yay, today's bathroom's day. (laughs) Nobody does that. 
right? No. <laughs> it is a tough work and it's not a fun job to do. So uh, my suggestion is to be very mindful of what you need to do in your home and make priorities. What does really bother you, you know, that you want to make sure that it's always clean. Or, you know, for some people, maybe the floor. So they want to make sure that they vacuum twice a week or like a few times a week, you know, but they don't have to go crazy with the bathrooms or vice versa. Some people may say, you know what, the bathroom and the kitchen has to be like done really nicely and they, they can prioritize those areas. Fantastic. And I know for me, if I get super frustrated, I gift myself with a cleaning service. I do that at least once a year. And <laughs> I love how they do a deep dive of mm-hmm. uh, cleaning, which I should up that to maybe twice a year. I don't know. It's just so joyful for me because as I mentioned, no matter what I do, I can't <laughs> create this joyful experience around cleaning. So I love your suggestion of really prioritizing what's most important, what's bothering me today. Now that you mentioned that you give yourself like a gift, maybe once or twice a year to have your home nicely deep cleaned, I feel that many of us are multitasking all the time. And then on top of it, you know, you have to have a nice clean house. It's like for women, especially, we have to be the perfect mother, perfect wife. You have to have the perfect career, you know. And on top of it, you have to have a super nice clean house. And really, that is a lot. So that's why I feel that it's so important. One, prioritize and don't go crazy, you know. Like if you cannot do it, it's fine. The house is not going to fall apart. And two, ask for help. It is so hard for us to ask for help and sometimes we feel that we are failing and that is not the reason why we're asked help it's because we're doing other things you know and you want to have it all done and we can do only so much right we only have a certain amount of time and we have to tackle so many things in the day that asking for help is not a bad thing And it doesn't have to be a regular cleaning. It doesn't have to be like a, ideally it would be like having a cleaning lady come in every week, right? Mm -hmm. But if you cannot do that, at least every few months have someone, you know, and have your home cleaned and then you can just keep it up. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on join the club to get started. And now back to the show. So true. And sometimes we just don't have the bandwidth. It's not about our abilities. It's just about how much can we fit in one day. And that's a great example of something we could outsource and get help with. And I imagine in your world, you're often meeting some clutter too, so which we're very right. familiar with. So can you share some experiences you may have had that have either helped you clean better or hindered the ability for you to clean homes all around clutter. Yeah, so and there's a big difference between organizing and cleaning because sometimes we get to an apartment or we get to a house and there's a lot of clutter. So we need to focus on the cleaning, right? And we are not professional organizers. Mm-hmm. Even though 
my team will try to make it look as nice as possible. If there's a pile of, you know, boxes uh, filled with stuff, there's not much that we can do about that. It's going to stay there. Right. And they have to go through their own things. So it, it is important that people understand that one thing is to get rid of their clutter first and then do the cleaning. We normally, when I work with professional organizers, that's the way we normally do it. The professional organizer go and they will do the decluttering and then we will do the cleaning. Because sometimes, no matter how much we clean, it never looks nice because there's so much stuff in the house. Yeah. You know, that's so interesting. I'm telling a little bit on myself, but I'm the kind of person who a long time ago, I realized that the expense of having a cleaning person come every week was well worth the amount of time that I was spending cleaning. And not just because I was actually physically cleaning, but I found that I was thinking about it all of the time, which is unfortunately my nature to become a little obsessive about things. I'm sure that those skills have been extremely helpful to me as an organizer, but I found Mm -hmm. that it was causing me unnecessary stress. So much in the same way that we talk to people about the value of having a professional organizer come in who can help set up those systems for you and help you to give you a framework through which to think about organizing. I found that for me, having someone come and take care of that for me was well worth the expense. And and I have to say, it's probably the best money I spend every month. So I think it's it's an important value. And I think the busier you are, the more important that becomes. And there's nothing like coming in the door to a freshly clean home. Speaking of our busy listeners, and we have a lot of busy listeners, a lot of times they are just looking for a strategy for keeping their homes clean in the same way that they want a strategy for organizing. Mm -hmm. What do you think works? Do you think having a cleaning schedule works where, you know, one day, Monday you do the bathroom and You know, the other day you do the floors, you vacuum and you dust on certain days. What do you think really is helpful as far as a strategy for keeping the home clean? Yeah, having a a schedule, it's a good idea. So they know that every Monday, you know, they have it on their calendar. So that's a, a good idea to have a calendar on what they're going to do each day. Now, my tip is to clean as you go. So that will really avoid build uh, build dirt up. Like if you're cooking and you spill something, clean it right away. You don't want to wait until the next day so there's another spill. And then the next day there's another spill until the stove is like a whole mess. And then it's a, just think about cleaning that stove. It's it's a task. (laughs) It's a job just to think about it. But if you keep it clean, if you clean as you go, that's a huge help too. You know, that's a great point. And as our friend Gretchen Rubin would say, that if you can do something in 60 seconds, then you should just go Mm -hmm. ahead and do it right then. And a lot of little cleaning tasks are things that can be done in 60 seconds or less. Right. The thing is that when you start like building up those little spills, it's like the same with clutter. It's one paper here. And then it's another paper there. And then two papers don't bother you. So a third one, you know, and then a fourth one, and then you have your desk full of paper and you don't know where to start. Same thing with the cleaning. Keep it as you go. That's the best thing to do. And if you apply that same strategy to your tidying maintenance, then cleaning ultimately becomes a lot easier too, I imagine. So right, picking up the wrapper from the counter or bringing the clothes to the bedroom that you know leaving each room a little better than when the way you found it right kind of the way I like to look at it and my biggest tip if you are going to commit to only one thing out of all of the cleaning you know out of all of the cleaning tasks in your home if you can only commit to one thing my tip and I'm really obsessed with this, is make your bed every day. 
if you make your bed every day, because it's the biggest thing in your bedroom, it'll look nicer and tighter and cleaner right away. So that's like an instant gratification. When you get up in the morning and then you go to work and then you come back at six o'clock thinking that you have to cook dinner, see the kids and everything. And on top of that, the bed hasn't been made. (laughs) That's like the worst. But at least your bed has been nicely made. And that is something that I do not negotiate. If I have to do one thing, I will make my bed. Great tip. We also have a lot of families who listen, who have children. Mm -hmm. And That can be tough because just like tidying, uh, it's not on the top priority list for kids typically. Mm -hmm. So how can we encourage kids to really embrace cleaning and take ownership? Little things depending on their age, of course. And it may not be hugely related with cleaning, you know, because they may not be able to vacuum or mop the floors. But Make sure that they, they have little chores every day. They will change their clothes in the morning. Do not leave the, uh, your PJs on the floor. You have to put it in the hamper, you know? Little things like that. And once they start seeing that they are taking care of it, and now they see everything that is nicely, it's tidy and it's like it looks nice, One thing will take the other one and they will take ownership and they will want to keep doing more. But little things, just as silly as picking it up and put it where it belongs. That is something that they should be taught at early age. If we keep doing it for them, they don't know that they have to do it. They think that, oh, they went to school and they came back and everything looks nice and clean. You know, so they never think about it. But if you tell them at young age that they need to help, they finish dinner, bring your plate to the sink, little things like that, clean up the table, things like that. And then they can start taking more and bigger chores as they grow up. I think that's such a great and important tip because so many of my clients when it comes to organizing, will tell me that their parents were extremely organized, but that they did everything for them. And so they never learned how to organize their things. Mm -hmm. And now as adults are trying to learn, you know, after the fact. So I think, I think that's a great tip. And Masala, you've given us so many great tips today. I'm wondering if you have a favorite cleaning tip that you would like to share. My favorite tip is the one that I I just mentioned that you should clean as you go. I think that's key because you don't want to build up dirt. (laughs) And also think that cleaning is not like a huge thing. I know that it sounds really big and tiring just from hearing about cleaning. You get tired tired like right away. But Maybe make sure that you have the right tools, you know, little things like that. I have many people who tell me, oh, I don't have carpets in my apartment, so I don't need a vacuum. And I'm like, in New York City, everybody needs a vacuum. (laughs) (laughs) You know, make sure that you have the right tools. So it makes it easier for you. Great tip. And speaking of those tools you mentioned, I would love to throw in a bonus question here, which is, what is your favorite green cleaning product? I personally like green products that are concentrated. You buy the bottle that is concentrated and you mix it with water. That is the best thing because one, you kind of like know how long it's going to last. You make it last as long as you want or as long as you can. And two, there's a um, huge impact for the environment too. If you buy a bottle, a plastic bottle of a spray and then you throw it away and then you buy another bottle and then you throw it away, it's a lot of plastic. Great tip. And finally, we ask all of our guests, what's sparking the most joy for you today? This podcast. 
It's been so much fun talking with you. This really made my day. And I'm serious. I'm being very genuine. This really made my day. Oh, well, that is very nice to hear. Thank you so much. So, Marcella, Mm -hmm. how can our listeners get in touch with you? They can go to our website, uh, www.mbgreencleaning.com. We are also on Instagram, MB Green Cleaning. I'm also on Facebook, MB Green Cleaning. On both platforms, uh, we are usually not only showing what we do, but also giving tips so people can follow the tips and they can keep their homes clean in between their cleanings. That's great. We'll make sure to link all of those sites and your blog and everything else to our show notes. Thank you. Thank you, Marcella. It was so great to talk with you tonight. Thank you much for having me. This was really fun. So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning, tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the Spark Joy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the Spark Joy community or join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your hosts, Kristen Ivey of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media, Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co-hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media, Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.